Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday morning worship experience of the Union Baptist Church. I'm here to provide this week's announcements before we get started with today's worship service. On Monday, October 3rd, please join us for fasting from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. and corporate prayer at 7 p.m. via Zoom, Facebook Live, and the conference call line. LUBC has been selected as a recipient of the Mayor's Religious Institution of the Year Award to be presented at the Mayor's Ball on Saturday, October 8th at 7 p.m. Youth Church will be held on Sunday, October 9th at 10 a.m. in the Reverend W. Urban Green Memorial Chapel. The topic is Satisfaction Guaranteed, Luke 9, 12 through 17, and John 6, 33 through 35. LUBC will observe Youth and Young Adult Day on Sunday, October 23rd at 10 a.m. Our guest preacher will be Minister Geneva Norfleet. The theme is Falling in Love with Jesus, and the scripture is 1 John 4, 19. We are soliciting our youth and young adults to gather to form a praise team or choir for this special day. A gift will be presented to the top three youth or young adults, bringing the most guests. Also on October 23rd, LUBC will officially recognize Deacon Wilbert Norfleet as an ordained deacon of the church. Early voting in Virginia is now available in person or by mail through Saturday, November 5th. The deadline to register to vote or to update your registration is October 17th. Election day and the last opportunity to vote is November 8th. And as always, Little Union, please join us every Monday at 7 a.m. for the 7 and 7 prayer call, as well as Bible study every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and Sunday school every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom and Facebook Live. Okay, Little Union, the worship service will begin shortly. Thank you for your time and enjoy the service. Thank you. 
morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, everybody. Amen. The musician is playing in the background, and I started getting happy. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Can anybody testify that he walks with you? He talks with you? He'll tell you everything is going to be all right. So I got a feeling today that everything is going to be all right. You might not feel it. You might can't explain it. But let me tell you, everything is going to be all right. And the joy that you share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Come on, stand with me. Come on, y'all. And he walks with me, walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share, and we tell there, none other has ever, ever known. Come on, let's say it one more time. with me and talk to me. We're going to ask our deacon to come to lead us in our invocational prayer. Amen. Know you. Even the more blessed are we to have you as our Lord and Savior. We ask you to come in and sup with us today. Come in and impart your, or some words of wisdom to us that we may retreat in a way that you find pleasure with. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 amen.
you may be seated in the presence of the Lord, we're going to ask the brothers to give us a man uh, their opening song at this time, or selection, should I say. Amen. Thank you so much. Time is filled. Time is filled with your transition. No. something. <laughs> I ain't gonna sit here and tell no lie in the pulpit. <laughs> They're gonna do something. But I want to say to, uh, first of all, um, Deacon uh, Carter. Deacon uh, Carter, oh. thank you so much. Oh. This in your house. Oh. It almost killed him to have this in his house until <laughs> the pastor's anniversary, but he's all right now. <laughs> Amen. I would preach in it, but this thing is hot. Lord, have mercy. Amen. But we do honor the Lord today. Amen. And to his son, Jesus, we thank God for another day that he has made. Again, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. For we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You ought to be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Why? I'm glad you asked. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen and amen. What a privilege it is again to be in the house of the Lord. I don't take it for granted. 
that I'm in God's house. I don't take it for granted that it allows me to walk on holy ground when I know I haven't been holy all week myself. Amen. We come in this house with dirty feet. We come in this house, amen, with messed up minds. We come in this house sometimes even mad with folk. And yet he let us live. We ought not ever come in the house with an attitude. Am I right about it? But we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Because he did not have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Don't forget, my brothers and sisters, tomorrow is seven, uh, 7 and 7 prayer call. Amen. And also, don't forget as well that we'll be fasting tomorrow from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then we're going to come together on Zoom and pray. Amen. The Bible says that men should always pray and not faint. Amen. Y'all believe in prayer? How many believe in prayer? Amen. We'll see y'all tomorrow night. Amen. At 7 o'clock. Praise the Lord. You just volunteered. Amen. We're looking forward, amen, to um, our Youth and Young Adult Day, amen, on the fourth Sunday of this month. We're looking forward to that, amen. Do you have that slide, sister? Of, of, um, yes, thank you, Melissa. Amen. Had a senior moment. Youth and Young Adult Day, amen. And our theme is falling in love with Jesus, amen. And we're looking forward, amen, to our guest preacher, Amen. Minister Geneva Norfleet. Amen. We're looking forward to God blessing us. Amen. And, and listen, youth and young adult, we have an incentive for you that uh, those who invite, uh, three of you who invite the most, amen, visitors on that day, amen, will receive, amen, a, 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 a gift card, a monetary gift card, amen. So you can buy whatever you want, amen, within the limit of that gift card, amen, amen. <laughs> And so, um, and then, uh, my brothers and sisters, not just for the youth to invite, but grandparents, parents, invite your children and tell them to invite their friends, amen, to come and share with us, amen, on Youth and Young Adult Sunday. Amen. We have some birthdays on this month. Have some, oh, somebody must have said it because it must be their birthday this month. <laughs> amen. Sister, uh, uh, is it Tiani? Tiani, thank you, mother. Uh, you must be the mother of her. Amen. Sister Tiani Perry, her birthday is on the 2nd of October. Deaconess Manya Jackson is on the 5th. Trustee Donald Jones is on the 5th. Amen. Sister Mary Johnson is on the 9th. Amen. Sister Phyllis Williams is on the 12th. Amen. I think she bought, bought everything for her birthday at Costco on yesterday when I saw her. <laughs> Amen. Sister Tammy Ware's birthday is on the 15th. Amen. Reverend Leroy Bell, he don't like me to call him Leroy. He said that's his whole name. Amen. But this is what they had with Leroy Bell. His birthday is on the 18th. Amen. <laughs> Sister Deborah Fuller. Amen. Her birthday is on the 19th. Brother Everett Willen is on the 20th. Brother Albert Dukes II is on the 21st. Sister Genevieve Ayers is on the 22nd. Sister Giselle Paris Harry. Giselle Paris Perry. Amen. Try to say that real fast again. Um, her birthday is on the 27th, and Sister Jean Dukes, amen, is on the 29th of October. Amen. Then celebrating, amen, anniversaries. <clears throat> There's his name again, the Reverend Leroy Bell and Deaconess Evelyn Bell, amen, will be celebrating their anniversary, amen, October the 12th, amen. How many years, Brother Preacher? 52. Lord have mercy. I was two years old. Amen. I was two years old, probably still wet in the bed. Amen. When he was, when he was born. Lord have mercy. Oh, when he got married. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a long time. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all were potty trained early, but, you know, I had problems. Amen. Amen. But thank God the Lord uh, uh, took care of that. Praise the Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, um, if you will, um, don't forget, uh, again, every uh, Wednesday, noonday, we have a wonderful time doing our noonday uh, Bible study. And then we also come back on Wednesday nights for our Wednesday night Sunday school. Amen. Having a wonderful time 
and both of those worship opportunities. That's what I call them, worship opportunities. Amen. And we give God praise, amen, for all of the teachers and all of the participation. Listen, uh, one thing about our Bible studies is not just the teacher teaching, amen, but you can chime in, amen, and, and, and give your opinion as well, amen. And, and that's what I like about our Bible studies, amen. Also, don't forget ways to give. There are ways to give, amen. You can, <clears throat> you can text to give at 773-570-2088. Um, uh, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to text to give, amen. Also, you can bring your tithes and offering, amen, to the church. As soon as you come in the house of the Lord, uh, there's a basket right at the table, and you can put your tithes and offering there. Also, you can come during the week and put it in the deposit box. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but you know where it is, amen. Amen. Then also, you can mail your tithes and offering to the church. Amen. Make sure you have that P.O. box number 58. If you, if you don't do that, it will come back to you. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, my brother, so we get your Bibles. Amen. Turn with me, and I'm going to take this coat off. Amen. Somebody say good. I, I see you, child of Reed. Amen. Y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of haters. Amen. Stand with me, my brothers and sisters, if you will. Amen. And turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Amen. I'm going to read verses 24 through 35. Amen. Mark chapter 5, verses 24 through 35. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him. And thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And had suffered many things of many physicians. And had spent all that she had. And was nothing bettered. But rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus. <clears throat> came in the press behind and touched his garment. And she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus Immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power or dunamis had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou see of the multitude thronging thee and say of thou who touched me. And he looked around, he looked round about to see her that had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Amen. We'll stop right there. The word of God for the people of God to the glory of God. Thanks be unto God. Want to use for a subject this morning. I've had enough. I've had enough. The men are going to come and give us two selections, right? Give us one. All right. Give us one. All right. And then we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen. Same brother.
Jesus has, can I get some more sound? I'm, my voice is kind of hoarse and I don't want to hurt myself. Thank you. I didn't see Sister Jackie stand up today. I wonder what's going on. Y'all all right? Y'all all right in the bank's house? <laughs> you know I had my eye on you, amen. Praise the Lord. Even Eli himself was wondering what's going on. That's what he just said. <laughs> Amen. We do honor the Lord today. Amen. To his son, Jesus Christ, and to the precious Holy Spirit, we honor. Amen. The people and the, the saints of God. Amen. In the sanctuary and in our virtual space. Amen. We say good morning to you. I'm going to say that one more time. I want to say good morning to you. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you. And we also want to thank God, amen, for our visitors. Amen. We see, amen, Deacon uh, Richard Taylor. I am got your name right, buddy. <laughs> it's a little joke that we know about. We ain't going to talk about that. Uh, but Deacon Rick Taylor and his wife, amen. They are, how long y'all been married now? Five months? Amen. And they are members, of course, of our sister church, amen, Mount Zion, amen, and Triangle, amen. Thank you for joining us today, amen. Thank you for gracing us with your presence, amen. So glad to see all of you in the house of God, amen, on today. We give God praise for you, you, and even you, amen. I had enough. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Let my will be lost in thine. So draw me nearer, Lord. Nearer. Nearer to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Nearer, precious Lord. To thy precious bleeding, bleeding side. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, my Lord, nearer, blessed Lord. Precious bleeding, bleeding side. Amen and amen. I've had enough. Thank God for Reverend Johnson being with us on today. Amen. He wasn't feeling well, but he's all right now. Amen. Thank God that you're all right. Thank God for all of those, amen, who are on our prayer list. The good news is you still on the prayer list. That means you're still here. Amen. That's good news. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've had enough. 
Dr. Edward Wembley, who is a professor at the International Theological Center in Atlanta, Georgia, said, watch this, <clears throat> the transitory human redemptive process happens when you get to a point where change is no longer voluntary, but it is mandatory. I said, you get to a point in life where change is no longer, I think I change, voluntary, but you know change is mandatory. I believe that what Professor Wembley said was correct because each of us reached a point in our journey with God where something had to change. It normally happens when you get uh, uh, to the point where you cannot go another further. When you have taken all you could take. Where you have taken all you can stand. And you make a conscious cognizant decision that uh, you have had enough. Florida Evans had enough. When Thelma did not understand why her mother did not cry over James Evans' death, Florida had enough. When she dropped the plates on the floor and expressed an explicative three times. Y'all know what she said, don't you? Every now and then, life will help you shout at least one explicative and in, and in uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, The Color Purple, Miss Sealy had enough. In this particular scene, Mr. was so mean, so trifling, so evil, and uh, pugnacious. Amen. I want to say some other words, but I'll just keep it at that. Mr. had done some horrible things to Miss Sealy. And as a matter of fact, Miss Sealy had co-signed and thought that women ought to be beaten on by men. Because she told her son, Hoppo, to beat his wife, Miss Sophia. But oh, there came a day when Miss Sealy had enough. They were sitting around the table and, uh, uh, because Miss Sophia had just gotten out of jail from hitting that white man. And Miss Sealy had decided she was going to leave town with Miss Shug. And when Miss Sealy was getting ready to leave, she had a suitcase packed and her bags was ready because she had enough. And when Mr. saw her, she told him that she was leaving with Miss Sugar and, 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 and Mr. started popping off at the mouth at the dinner table. Miss Sealy just snapped. That's what happens when you've had enough sometimes. You don't need a moment to be right because sometimes the moment is right, right now. Amen. Miss Silly grabbed the knife out of the ham, stuck the knife to Mr. Throat and said, I've never asked you for nothing. Not even your sorry bleep bleep in hand of marriage. Y'all remember that? There comes a time, amen, when you've had enough. That, that, guess what, that uh, biblical words don't come out of your mouth. I submit to you today that there are people parked on every pew and there are many viewing us in our virtual space who um, have, uh, 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 have to be in two categories. Number one, and thank God for my wife being here today. Hey, baby. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Had to take a time out right there. One, you have, uh, uh, one, one category is you have seen a change since Jesus, since you met Jesus. You can humbly say that something has come over you and that your life, amen, has never been the same. I've reached a point where uh, I was uh, fed up and got tired of everything. And the Lord came into my life and your life. And when he got through with us, he gave us a new way of talking, a new way of clapping, a new way of living, and a new way of worshiping. Is there anybody here and out there uh, that has been uh, here at least one time when you got to the point where uh, you could uh, uh, not go another further and you've had enough and God rescued you from right where you were? There's a second category of people who sit in the church looking like all is good and well on the outside and are truly jacked up on the inside. 
I've come all the way from Eagle Point on Route 1 to let you know that God specializes uh, with people who have said they've had enough. I'm in the text because in this gospel of Mark, uh, which was really the first gospel to ever be written, amen, in this gospel, uh, Jesus Christ is a, watch this, a demon-busting deliverer who does not take any trash from hell. When Jesus shows up in the gospel of Mark, even demons pray that, he would, that, they, that, that Jesus would not destroy them. When this gospel begins to unfold, Jesus is moving demons and casting out evil spirits. He is literally letting everybody know that there is something in him that says, I am large and in charge. By the time we get to chapter 5, amen, he meets a hopeless, amen, a, a, a man who is uh, living in the tombs. We talked about that last Sunday, right? And he's been in the tombs all night long. He's been there for many years, cutting himself with stones, uh, 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 amen. Everybody else thinks he's crazy, amen. But Jesus comes through a storm just for him. I told you last week, but let me give you uh, something else for free, that uh, if the Lord has to come through a storm for you, he will do it. Am I right about it? Somebody missed their shout right there. The Bible says that um, he knows uh, uh, that he knows this man's uh, address and zip code. And when he gets uh, to uh, the middle of the seas, the storm breaks out. And, uh, uh, and, and, and then he and Jesus spoke three words that made the wind cease and made the waves lay down. He said, peace, be still. And the Bible says there was a great calm. Lord, have mercy. By the time Jesus gets through with this man, he is seated, clothed, and in his right mind. He asked Jesus, uh, could he go with him? And Jesus said, no, because I need you to go back home. Amen. And, uh, uh, and, and what I want you to do is be a walking billboard showing people and your family what the Lord has done for you. And I just want to ask on this morning, is there any folk in here who don't mind being a walking billboard for the Lord? That you can testify wherever you go, yes, I love Jesus. Yes, he's been good. Yes, he's a healer. Yes, he's a deliverer. He's all that in a bag of chips. Hallelujah. Be a walking billboard. Jesus is now getting ready to go heal, watch this, Jairus' daughter. And while en route to heal uh, uh, this man's daughter, which uh, she was already declared dead, pretty much, this woman, watch this, pops out of nowhere. I like her little union because uh, 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 she does not have an invitation. She's not supposed to be there. And Jesus didn't come for her, and she just says, uh, you know what? I've had enough. I've been sick 12 years, and I know they don't want me here or don't want me uh, uh, near him. And I know uh, he has an entourage and a posse, and, and there are some folk hanging around him that don't really mean him any good. I know, amen, uh, he has a bunch of people around him, but I'm not leaving until I get what I came for. She makes her way through the crowd, grabs him, amen, uh, uh, by the hem of his garment, and the text says she got healed. Not the next day. It did not say she got healed next week or the next month, amen, but the text says immediately the fountain of her blood dried up. She knew something happened, and in fact, everybody, amen, because uh, uh, everybody was touching Jesus, but only one got healed that day. And I'm just looking for one person today who has come to church, and you're not feeling well, but you're gone, and you believe you're going to leave here feeling better. No need to come to church if you don't think God can make your situation better. I may have uh, 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 come here, amen, amen, but, but I may have been come here feeling down, but I believe I'm going to leave here feeling up. I may have come here feeling sad, but thank God, amen, he has made me glad. 
I may have come here worried, but since I've uh, been here, since I've been here, amen, my burdens have been lifted. It's because if he only heals one, uh, uh, then guess what? Uh, uh, he's already done enough. Even if the Lord don't heal me, but to know that he healed you, amen, amen, that's good enough for me. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who's had enough of worry and, 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 and you're now ready for worship? You've had enough of negative people and uh, you need a new circle of people. Let me tell you, God will give them to you. You had enough of being sick and now you're ready to get well. You know, there's some folk don't want to be healed. Because they always want a pity party. Am I right about it? How you feeling? I'm, I'm so sick. When you... Okay, anyway. You're tired of being broke and now you're ready to get paid. You're sick of all the foolishness and now you're ready to move forward. You ought to tell somebody, I had enough. So the relevant question is, how do you know when you've had enough? I'm glad you asked. You know you've had enough when you realize that if you don't do something soon, it's going to kill you. Please note this this morning that the devil, watch this, wants all of us dead. If you don't believe me, then believe Jesus because he said the devil comes to kill steal and to destroy and if you don't believe Jesus then believe at least Peter because Peter says the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour Lord have mercy watch the text my brothers and sisters the woman is nameless all we know is that she is the woman with the issue of blood that's significant, and here's why. Be, uh, uh, because uh, whenever there is, watch this, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, anonymity in the text, there is inclusivity by the writer. The reason why her name is not mentioned, it's not that she's not important, but it means that you may at some time in your life have to put your name where her name should be. Preach, sisters, I'm doing the best I can. At the end of the day, uh, 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 the writer did not use her name because you may have to use your name. Watch this. She has been sick 12 years. And it's amazing. Whenever you hear people preach this text, we always talk about the length of her illness. And this is why you need to give me proper time to study because I can't preach what I don't know. But when I discovered, uh, what I discovered from studying, uh, the reason why 12 is mentioned is not just to give you the definition of her length of illness, but to give you the scope of her limitations. The longest you could live with this particular issue of blood was 12 years. So wait, she's at a point that she has to do something or die. She's at a point where she has to make a decision as to whether she is going to live no matter what's going on around her because the enemy wants her dead. And it's not that deep because it's the devil's agenda for everybody that's in here. He wants you dead. He can do more damage if the saints die. That's why the church ought not to never be a dead place. Let me say that again. That's why the church ought not be a dead place. I hate, I can't stand dead church. I don't want to sit, I don't want to sit next to a dead saint. I don't want to be around dead beats. I don't want to be around nothing that has been dead for a certain amount of time. My mother and my father have been dead for quite a while, but uh, uh, I couldn't, I could only take their dead body, but for so long. I want to remember them in a good space. Why? Because everything around Jesus ought not to be dead. Let me do a pew check right here. Is there anybody here and out there who came in or signed on for worship uh, just to have dead church? 
Because at the end of the day, any time, or, or should I say, anything that is dead ought to be buried. And if you want dead church, you need to be buried too. Gave you that for free. I submit to you that if the enemy has his way, amen, he will kill your joy. He will kill your purpose. He will kill your destiny. He will kill your future, amen. He will kill your life. He will kill everything around you. But I got good news. Well, that while the devil is trying to kill you, the Lord won't let him have you. Hallelujah. Many of you can testify, I've had cancer and I thought it was a death sentence, but I'm still here. Because the Lord told him, put him down. Put her down. You can't have him. You can't have her. Hallelujah. You can't, watch this, you can't shout until you know you could have been dead. And the obituary could have been written. And the Lord made the devil leave you alone. Is there anybody in here and out there who can testify that the Lord made the devil give me back my life? Hallelujah. He made the devil give me my family back. He made the devil give me my joy back. He made me, and he could have, uh, uh, watch this, he could have killed me, but thank God, God is still on the throne, and he has the last say. Am I right about it? According to the biblical, the biblical record, um, he had the apostle Paul. The devil had the apostle Paul, but God made him leave Paul alone. When he left Paul alone, a, a, a man, uh, 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 he got a little, uh, Paul got a little cocky and said, well, since I'm not dead, he said, yet will I rejoice. And again, I say, I will rejoice. And Paul says, uh, 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 because uh, I rejoice because I'm going to press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But Paul, aren't you worried? He says, I'm not because, he says, uh, I put all of that foolishness behind me. I have not arrived because guess what? I know how to be abased. I know how to, to abound. He said, I've been broke and I've also had a whole lot. I know how to eat filet mignon and I know how to be satisfied with a syrup sandwich. Anybody ever had a syrup sandwich? That's all you had? Oh, y'all had such privileged lives. Amen. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to run for Jesus. Not only do we realize that if we uh, don't do something, it will kill us. My second point is we have to recognize that when all is said and done, watch this, our internal issues will cause us external problems. I said, our internal issues will cause external problems. Look, uh, you ought to look to your left, to your right. Look to your left, to your right. Look to your left, to your right. You could even look behind you and look in front of you. And you will see people who have been through hell and back. Since I have the mic, amen. Let me tell you, y'all testimony. I'm going to tell you y'all testimony. Amen. I'm going to speak for y'all. They have lied on you. They talked about you. You've been mistreated. You've had to struggle, strain, and go through some strife. You have seen trouble, trial, tragedy, and trauma. You have been dropped by people that told you that they love, that they love you. And they did not mean it. You have been stabbed in the back by folk that thought uh, 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 that you thought were your friends, and uh, they are still here sitting next to you with a smile on their face. You cannot see it by looking at them uh, because uh, 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 they're dressed up on the outside, but on the inside, we're tore up. We've been hurt. 
And is there anybody in here and out there who can testify and say that I have been wounded more times than I can count? Lord, have mercy. You don't know uh, 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 like I know what the Lord has done for me. The woman has an internal issue. She is unclean. She is hemorrhaging. And because uh, it's internal uh, underneath, you cannot see it. It's not visible. So from the outside, she looks all right. But on the inside, on the inside, she's been bleeding a long time. And as I studied this text, it hit me that after, amen, uh, years of pastoring black Baptist people, I finally figured out why some folk are mean, jealous, hypocritical, and won't even shake their neighbor's hand because they are bleeding and nobody knows it but them. You got choir members who are singing and, 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 and they get, amen, uh, 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 to shouting, amen, and people uh, ask, what's wrong with them? Uh, amen. They are bleeding and you can't see it. In fact, there, uh, there are people uh, on every row and even those who are in our virtual space. Amen. You look good. Amen. You have degrees on your wall, but on the inside, you are bleeding. And can I, amen, tell you a secret? God is allowing it to happen. God lets it happen to you. I don't care what made you bleed, but God allowed it to happen. God did not, amen, he didn't leave town. Uh, uh, he did not uh, take a vacation. God allows his people that he loves to go through some stuff that will make us cry sometimes, doesn't it? It'll even make us whine sometimes. And also, it'll cause us, if we don't get it straight, it'll cause us to hurt other people. Because hurt people will hurt other people. I do not believe in the theology of mountain peak to mountain peak. Hey, nobody's always on the mountaintop all the time. I don't believe in that religion because if the Lord, amen, 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 if you love the Lord, you are going to have to cry sometimes. You're going to have to go through a little bit of hell and high water, and you're going to have some ups and some downs. But Pastor Sessom, uh, why would a good God allow me to bleed? I'm glad you asked. I'm so glad that the existential ontological interrogative has pierced your thinking. God knows that, uh, uh, um, amen, uh, um, that, uh, uh, that, that, that sheep stays close to the shepherd and he just happens to like your company. So he knows if you suffer long enough, you'll end up in his lap. So he can say, I may have uh, to bleed some. You can say, I may have to bleed sometimes, but thank God I'm in the Lord's lap and he's taking care of me. I have a doctor who specializes in healing and he can fix me from the inside out. Is there anybody here and out there, amen, who have ever experienced uh, uh, God, amen, amen, he healed you from the inside. And because you know you've been healed, because you can now, you can love who you, uh, who don't love you. Because God healed you, you can treat people right even though they won't treat you right. Because you're grateful of the love of God. You can speak to people when they come past you. Amen, amen, amen. And, and guess what? And some folk, they ain't slick. They hold their head down acting like they don't see you. But because you love them and you're grateful what God has done, you will stop them where they are. I said good morning. You can smile and shake hands with people when you know they've been talking about you all the time. You can still love people even when they lie on you. I can treat people right regardless of how they treated me because guess what? The Lord has healed my heart. The woman has something going on on the inside that is affecting everything on the outside. 
But we have a healer in the house that's able to touch stuff that nobody else can touch. Hallelujah. He can heal stuff that the MRI won't even show up. Am I right about it? There is a ministry in the church that, 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 that the church uh, has often negated, and it's called the ministry, watch this, of deliverance. Trust me, our Pentecostal brothers and sisters uh, uh, don't have, they, they don't have a monopoly on the ministry of deliverance. Some folk uh, don't believe that God delivers. Some people believe that God uh, just goes, uh, he, just, he just put a bandage on your wound. You'll hold that bandit, some people think, until you get to heaven. There was a preacher, amen, his name was uh, uh, J. Vernon McGee. J. Vernon McGee, amen, was a great, amen, Bible scholar, amen. But J. Vernon McGee had cancer, and God led another preacher to come to J. Vernon McGee to lay hands on him and pray that God would heal his cancer. And, and J. Vernon McGee said, no, you can't pray for me because I don't believe God heals during this day and time. He healed during the apostle days. He don't heal now. It'd be a sad day if we as saints of God had no hope that God could not heal what's going on with us on the inside. See, see, my brother and sister, you can be a student of the Bible and not even believe what the Bible says. Jesus takes the woman that was bent over, y'all remember, uh, with an infirmity. And when he looked at the woman, he looked at her condition and understand and understood that the, that the devil was in this woman. And he simply said, woman, thou art loosed. And the Bible says immediately, amen, uh, 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 that woman that was bent over was straightened up. Every child of God ought to believe in, uh, in the ministry of deliverance. Because if the truth be told, all of us have been delivered from something, some person, or some place. That habit that you had, you could not seem to break. You prayed and you prayed, hoping it wouldn't be too late. But you turn it over to Jesus and you stop worrying about it. You turn it over to the Lord and he worked it out. That's what you call deliverance. You can, you can be a thief and God can deliver you to steal no more. You can be a liar and now God can turn your life around and now you can be a truth teller. But when the Lord delivers your life, amen, you are to come out with a uh, used to be testimony. Am I right about it? Because when you say, it's a sad thing when folks say, oh, that person still steals. That person still lied, a notorious liar. Amen. I told a noonday crowd one day, amen, me and Doc Jones were somewhere at, at, at a funeral, and we met this preacher, and Doc Jones said, Doc, he's a notorious liar. I said, no. He said, Doc, I'm telling you, he's a notorious liar. And so I met the preacher, shook his hand. He said, oh, yeah, Sesame. And I had never met him before. Oh, yeah, Sesame. Uh, we talked last year. I'm supposed to come preach at your church. I never knew the man. Immediately, I understood he was a notorious liar. <laughs> Amen. We all have to. We all have, ought to have a used to uh, 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 used to be testimony. Amen. I was like that before, but uh, 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 the Lord delivered me. Amen. Uh, he can take the dope heads and make them deacons. The law, uh, a amen. The Lord can take a stripper from the pole. Amen. Male or female, because males do it too. Amen. And when, amen, uh, uh, he's, uh, 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 and while they're throwing dollar bills at him or her, making it rain, God can change that person around, amen, from dancing on the pole and make them praise dancers. <laughs> oh, he can do it. Yes, he can. When the Lord gets through, he can change you. Tell somebody, he is, he's able to deliver. Here's my last point, then I'm done. A few years ago, I did a house blessing. And when I was pastoring in Alaska, okay, a woman, she was single, had two children. I don't like, I don't like to do stuff on Saturdays because I love to spend time, amen, with the text and going over my sermon. Anyway, 
amen, me and some deaconess and deacons went, amen, to the sister's house. When I got in the house, I could not help uh, 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 that uh, there was a picture of a handsome man in the center of her coffee table. And you know, preachers are nosy, and preachers, pastors like to meddle in folk business every now and then. You're meddling, pastor, you're meddling. So she said, amen. <laughs> so since I'm the pastor, and, and, and I could ask questions that other folk were afraid to ask, amen. That's how it is with some of us in our meetings today. We have to ask questions because others are afraid to ask. I noticed the picture, amen. We prayed, we prayed over the house, amen. Uh, uh, we had a good time, had some good food. We thank God for, the, for, for, for uh, blessing her, amen. Uh, uh, thank God for giving, amen, the young lady a new house, amen. Uh, and when everybody else is leaving, I stayed for a moment. And I asked her, I'm just curious, sister, who's that handsome man in the center of your coffee table? I have to say this, and I, and I know people are not going to like it, but uh, 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 you should not move in folk in your house with no plans of getting married. Because guess what? You have no security. You don't know if he or she going to be there today or tomorrow. Amen. I, got, I gave y'all that for free as well. You don't have any security when you live with someone playing house. The person really love you. They ought to commit to you and say, I do for better or worse. Somebody asked me about some member who was uh, 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 living out of wedlock. And I, and I asked, and they wanted, they wanted to ask me uh, what I'm going to do about it. Well, I said, well, what did the church do with you when you had your scandal? That was the end of that conversation. So I asked this sister, I said, what, uh, 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 is that your uncle or your brother? Who is that? She said, Pastor, that's my ex. Now I'm confused. I feel like most of you. I love Jesus, but I'm not about to put a picture of my ex on the coffee table. I'm not going to put it on my fireplace mantle. I'm not going to put a picture on my smart TV. I'm not going to put a picture of my ex. Just don't go together. She sat me down and, and made me understand. She said, you see, uh, when he left me, my world crashed. I ended up in a woman's shelter because uh, I put all my trust in him. But when he dropped me, I met God right where I was. And the Lord has been healing and blessing me ever since. I went back to school, got my GED, amen. I got my bachelor's in nursing. I took the RN certification test, and I passed on the first time. I rented an apartment and signed a one-year lease, saved my money. I saved my money. I put a down payment on this lot and land, and I built this house. And so my ex deserves a lot of credit because, amen, uh, 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 he lit the fire in me to do what I needed to do for myself. That's why the picture's there. He gets some credit. But God gets the glory. <laughs> because if he had never dropped me, God, amen, I would have never uh, asked God to help me. Is there anybody here and out there who can shout, uh, there are times I will bleed, but uh, that's when God will bless me and bless you like crazy. So you have to realize no matter what anyone tells you, the enemy wants you dead. You have to re recognize that sometimes internal issues cause us external problems. And finally, you have to utilize, watch this, your faith to tailor your future. You got to utilize your faith to tailor your future. Amen. This is just for the people who have said, I've had enough. Remember this, your tongue tailors your future. Watch what comes out of your, watch what comes out of this mouth of yours. There were three things in this text that, that, uh, that uh, drove me crazy every time I think about it. Watch this, the woman talks, the woman touches, and the woman takes. Repeat after me, talks, touches, takes. 
she says to herself, every now and then you have to talk to yourself. And sometimes you have to answer yourself too. I know folks say, uh, uh, it's all right to talk to yourself, but when you answer yourself, I think you, you know, on the deep end, you may be out in left field. But I know for a fact, every now and then I got to talk to myself and answer myself. Amen. You ain't crazy if you do that. Not only uh, do we see her talk to herself because she says, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. But uh, she touches. She presses her way through the crowd. And the Bible says that uh, she, gets to, uh, uh, she gets to the hem of his garment and she touches it. She touches the Greek word, haptu, which means, amen, uh, to make contact or to grab hold to. But what makes this so good is that I thought she uh, just grabbed the hem of his garment. No, it's more to it than that. You see, uh, Jewish men uh, 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 wear a garment on the outer shoulder called the talit. And it's a prayer shawl, if you will, uh, that they wear. And uh, they have tassels on it called Zigzags, that's what they're called. It's a beautiful picture because uh, zigzags represents the word of the living God. So as they walk during the day, uh, it is if they're walking in the word and will of God. You see, there was a lot of people around Jesus that day, but only one person had enough sense to grab hold of his word. Now, I told, uh, I, I don't know which word she grabbed or which tassel she grabbed or what zigzag she grabbed, amen, uh, uh, on that day. But whatever she grabbed, she grabbed hold onto it and it healed her. I've come to give you uh, some word that uh, you can grab onto today that, watch this, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Come on, Michael, and let me close this thing. The Lord is my shepherd. That's some good word. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. That's some word you can grab on to today. Uh, uh, if that's not a tassel that's going to heal you, let me go uh, a little further. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That might not be your tassel, but let me give you one more. Cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he careth for you. I will look to the hills which cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Here's another one. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Here's another word for you. Grab on to it. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Therefore I shall not fear. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be cast in the midst of the sea. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. If my people, this another word, shall call upon my name, humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn from the wicked ways. Then and only then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sins and heal the land. Ask yourself has the tassel healed you yet because if it hasn't healed you just let me give you one more word be careful for nothing that's what the word says but with everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests 
be made known unto God. And watch this. And the peace of God will keep your heart and mind in Jesus. Here's the last one. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I want to know today, is the Lord all right? Is he a keeper? Is he a keeper? Is he a heart fixer? Is he a mind regulator? Ain't he all right? Won't he touch you? Won't he heal you? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he turn your midnight in the day? Anybody know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. yeah. I know a man from Galilee. If you're in sin, he'll set you free. Anybody know him? And he all right. Say yeah. Whoa, yeah. Hallelujah. I've had enough. You've had enough. When the thing you've been dealing with, you know it's going to kill you. Hallelujah. You've had enough because what's on the inside is affecting you on the outside. Hallelujah. You had enough. My God. When you're sick and tired, of being sick and tired. Father, thank you for your word today. Help us to get to a point, God, that we have had enough. Had enough of foolishness. Had enough of this and that. And all we want now is more of you. The doors of the church are open. We want to invite you to come to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worthy of all of your blessings. My, my, my. Lord, give me a clean heart. Is there one today? You know you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You are tired. You said, I've had enough, Reverend. I want to lay my burden down. Jesus' hands is still outstretched to you, saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and I have laid, and I will give you rest. Maybe you strayed away, and you think God is mad with you. Let me tell you, God is not mad nor disappointed. His hand is still outstretched to you right now. You can come and reclaim your place in Jesus Christ. Maybe you love the Lord. Maybe you're saved and all that great stuff. But you're not a member of a local church. Won't you come and cast your lot right here at the Little Union Baptist Church? We don't have it all together. Uh uh. We ain't gonna even act like we got it all together. But guess what? We're striving to please God to the best of our ability. My, my, my. Please give me. Is there one? Is there one? Come on, somebody, is there one? God is calling you, he's nudging, he's nudging at you. You feel kind of uneasy. That's the Holy Spirit telling you to come right now. Hallelujah. Even if you're in our virtual space, you can become a virtual member, amen. Won't you call us, write us, send us an email, let us know. I want to give my life to Jesus. Let us know you want to be a member of the Little Union Church. We'll contact you. We'll get back with you and let you know what you must do to go further in God's word. Maybe you use my Or I'm not. Or I'm not worthy. Thank you, Brother Deacons.
thank you. Amen. You may be seated. I'm not worthy. this sermon was lengthy today. Amen. I know. Amen. I know Reverend Johnson. <laughs> and I was going to make it a two-part series, but I won't be here next week. God's will, I'll be in Panama on the beach right. with my lovely wife. And so I had to get it in before I get it in. <laughs> Amen. We pray that something was said and done to help you along the way. Amen. We we don't pretend to have it all together, but we do serve a God who does have it all together. And he can fix whatever ails us in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you, 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 and even you, that God will continue to bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. Sister Howard, I'm praying for you, that God will continue to hold you in the palm of his hand. He's able. I say he's able. You know, we sometimes we don't have a clue what the person sitting next to you is going through. But thank God for the spirit of God. Brother Danny told me the other day that his daddy had given up. He was ready to die. And I went to the hospital to see him, and he looked good. But he was ready to die. We sung songs with him. We prayed with him. He woke up the next morning and told his son, I'm ready to live, and I'm ready to go home. Everything is all right. <laughs> My brother and sister, that's what makes ministry so worthwhile, that you can just... Do your part. Do what the Lord told you to do. Don't you worry about the result. Let him take care of that. But you just do what the Lord tells you to do. Let us all stand. Don't forget prayer tomorrow, 7 at 7 prayer call. Reverend Bell, will you continue to lead that? Will you continue to lead that for us? I appreciate it. Amen. He's been leading the prayer call the whole month of September. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Also, don't forget, we're fasting and praying. If you can't fast from food because of your health reasons, fast from something, whether social media or whatever it is. Amen. Leave it alone from five to five. And listen, it does you no good to go without food, and then you don't fill yourself with God's word and with prayer. Amen. You just missed a few meals. That's all you did. But when you pray and empty yourself of yourself and fill yourself with him, what a blessing you will be to the people of God. We pray you have a good week. We pray that you, whatever you desire to do and whatever desire Whatever desire you want God to do in your life, that it will come to fruition. Come on, let's sing. Praise God from whom? God from whom? All blessings flow. All blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures.
calling in to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And we all say, Amen.